Hello and welcome to this special broadcast on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. So tensions between Iran and the United States of America have escalated further. On Wednesday morning, Iran launched a ballistic missile attack on the air bases housing the U.S. forces in Iraq in retaliation to the killing of military commander General Qasem Soleimani in a U.S. strike on Friday. More than a dozen missiles were launched from Iran that uh, struck two air bases in Erbil and Al-Assad in West Baghdad. Iran claims around 80 U.S. soldiers were killed in the missile attack. The country's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, called the attack a slap in the face of the United States, while President Hassan Rouhani warned that Tehran won't retreat in the face of America. The U.S. confirmed the attack but claimed no casualties in initial assessments. In a Twitter message, President Donald Trump said, and I quote, all is well. Missiles launched from Iran at two military bases located in Iraq. Assessment of casualties and damages taking place now. So far, so good. In fact, he also said, we have the most powerful and well-equipped military anywhere in the world by far. And in a few minutes from now, Donald Trump will also deliver an address on the conflict with Iran. So we'll be getting you that address of the U.S. president in a short while from now. For the moment, let me cut across to my uh, colleague, Akhilesh Suman, the Foreign Affairs Editor of Rajya Sabha TV. He will explain to us about the dangerous situation that is arising in West Asia. Akhilesh, uh, help us understand how, over the last few days, tensions have escalated and now, following today's missile attack by Iran, do you think the, both, both the countries have now moved a step closer towards, in fact, to say both countries are now officially on the brink of war? I cannot say just now that they are at the brink of war, but, but you know, that uh, situation is quite tense. And while I was trying to get an assessment from Ministry of External Affairs and also Ministry of Defense, uh, uh, even we were talking to, um, you know, many ambassadors who are based in Delhi, everyone is keeping fingers crossed about the result of today's bombing, whether American soldiers have been killed in that bom bombing that had happened inside Iraq yesterday or not. Uh, you know, that uh, it was surprise and shock to many that... Uh, uh, the Iranian uh, general was killed, and it was uh, it came all of a sudden. Nobody could say uh, that this is going to happen. And when this happened, it was really a shockwave in uh, the whole Gulf, and many people were surprised about this action. But given the fact that you know uh, Iran and U.S. had very tense relation for quite some time, uh, especially after Mr. Donald Trump came to power as president in the United States, I think. Uh, something drastically everyone of us expecting. Mm -hmm. And as the elections in the United States is coming uh, soon, so I think uh, uh, it was a very, you know, well-planned uh, uh, thing that the United States wanted to show something inside his country that he is taking a stern action against Iran. And the way nuclear, the deal with Iran was cancelled, I think this is a culmination. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, that... Uh, uh, Iran also retaliated. But in retaliation, Iran Foreign Minister Mr. Javed Jarif also told that it was a proportionate retaliation. So proportionate retaliation is something, a word, that you can understand that it is trying to reconcile, it, it, can also, it is also trying to persuade uh, the Americans and the Allied forces that it is not beyond something that you have done. You have damaged uh, my general, you have killed my general, so uh, to show our domestic, uh, like Iranian domestic people, uh, Iran also has to do something. And it was well uh, uh, conveyed by ambassador of Iran in Delhi, who told us that, yes, uh, after the killing of uh, General Soleimani, uh, the domestic demand was very high and Iran has to retaliate. So I think this type of a statement, when it is coming from Iranian side, I think there is a trial to, you know, uh, create certain situation that uh, America can be persuaded not to escalate the war. And, and but, from uh, the U.S. side, Akhilesh, but what you're suggesting is, of course, that uh, nobody wants to escalate a warlike situation. But, you know, the subtle warning that we saw in Donald Trump's message this morning on Twitter, in which he, you know, very subtly reminded that uh, the United States has the most powerful and the most well-equipped army in the world. And now, in, in this uh, address that he's set to deliver, what can we expect? 
Yes, everyone in the world knows that the United States is the most powerful military power in the world. They have most sophisticated weapons, everything they do have. And uh, uh, there is no doubt about it. But given the fact that, uh, you know, there is a situation uh, that uh, American allies are also in the region and American, uh, you know, warships are spread, American bases are spread all over the world. So before escalating certain uh, war-like situation or before escalating in a real proper war, America also have to rethink uh, uh, again and again. And that is why uh, Mr. Donald Trump in the night, uh, American time, he said that we will talk in the morning. We will, I will speak in the morning and we are going to hear him after a while. But uh, Americans in between are assessing the situation that what was the damage in Baghdad uh, uh, missile attack, uh, I mean, in actually Tehran's missile attack inside Iraq. And if, uh, you know, the American soldiers are being killed, it will be a challenge for Mr. Donald Trump that whether he is going to take any action because uh, he had warned earlier that any action against Iraq, Americans will be retaliated more fiercely. So I think it's a real challenge to Mr. Donald Trump that how he's going to react. But the yes. whole American system is, you know, some they are always ready for war. It is not, there is no doubt about it. And a Republican parliamentarian in the morning has uh, uh, tweeted and he has made a statement in Washington, D.C. that it is an act of war from the Iranian side. So I think uh, uh, Mr. Trump is assessing the situation, what is the damage and what is the common call from the American side, how ready his whole system is. And I think in a while we will hear that what is come. But indeed, America is also under intense pressure. But uh, let us hear that what he is going to tell about the damage that uh, American two bases have faced uh, inside Iraq. And if damages are too high, I hope that Americans will do something more uh, uh, and it may go into uh, confrontation, it may go into escalation. But in between, I think world powers are that it should not escalate. And even India is also trying to uh, persuade uh, through all its means to Americans and both Iranians mm -hmm. because Indian stake is also very high and not only Indians, European stakes are very high and even uh, the whole Central Asia will be, you know, again on the boil if a war escalates and the Middle East is already under confrontation. Israelis mm -hmm. are there uh, 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 near Iran and Iraq. So I think uh, American stakes is also uh, stakes are also very high. And in this situation, if uh, India and other powers in the world are trying to persuade America that it should not escalate, let us see that how Americans are convinced with the situation. So generally, situation is very, very tense. Everyone is keeping the fingers crossed and trying to hear that what Mr. Trump is going to tell us in a, in a while and what was the loss that has happened in the missile attacks uh, uh, yesterday night, hmm. you know? Akhilesh, so, so you pointed out that, you know, several countries are making attempts in convincing both countries not to escalate the tensions further. Uh, what, what is India doing? Have you heard from the MEA? What, what, what is the policy that India is adopting, in fact, has adopted so far on this very issue? I think um, Indian, India is talking to all and um, till today, I have got information that India has talked to all the stakeholders in the Middle East. And uh, earlier, uh, External Affairs Minister S. Jasankar had talked to, um, you know, many countries in the Gulf. And the persuasion and the conversation is going on even today. Because what will be the eventuality if there is a real escalation of uh, the situation? Other than that, you know, Iranian foreign minister is also expected to come around, you know, January 14. He had uh, to take a part in Raisina dialogue that is organized, uh, you know, in partnership with uh, AMEA and, uh, you know, ORF. So I think uh, India is very well uh, in connect with all the stakeholders, what I have got the information. India is also talking to countries in European Union because many of the European Union countries are part of NATO. And uh, India has a very good relations with uh, most of the NATO partners separately. 
So I think uh, it will be uh, in the interest of India if war does not escalate, and that is why India is trying hard. We have to, yes, you know, safeguard our uh, Chabahar port that India is uh, making, and India is a, a, a claimant that India will intervene into Central Asian peace. And uh, we have very big stakes in Afghanistan also. Mm. So in that situation, uh, our uh, diplomatic corps are very well uh, in connect with all the stakeholders. And uh, the ambassador, Harsh Singla, who is in Washington, D.C., as Indian ambassador, and who will be the foreign secretary next, he is also in touch with uh, the Washington, D.C. officials. So I think... Uh, you know that uh, India has one of the major um, uh, oil import from the Gulf region, and if uh, war escalates, if the situation becomes uh, difficult, then India will also have to uh, find uh, some other solutions. And uh, you know that we have, we were hearing Dharmendra Pradhan that he was telling that we are ready for all the consequences because we have many other sources of oil supply in mean, many countries in Africa, even U.S. supplies us, uh, you know, with the fuel. Hmm. But, you know, that India is quite uh, convinced with the uh, thing that there should be no escalation, and India is trying all its guts with both the countries and all the stakeholders, even the NATO members. And what I am hearing that NATO members are sitting, going to sit in Brussels, and they are going to decide the future course of action. So India is quite uh, seized of the matter, I can tell you, Tina. Okay. In fact, in this regard, we also heard the Iranian envoy this evening <clears throat> say that, you yeah. know, it is looking towards good friend India. In fact, India happens to be good friends both with Iran and the United States. And Iran says whatever it did was not to escalate tensions, but to seek revenge of the killing of its uh, military commander, uh, General Commander Qasem uh, Soleimani. And, you know, after that, the tensions escalated further. So what Donald Trump has to say in his address, in fact, the first presidential response will come in a few moments from now. And we'll get you live as to what Donald Trump has to say after the Iranian missile attack on the U.S. forces in fact, on the US, base, uh, U.S. forces housed at uh, bases in Iraq. So we'll get you that after a few moments from now. Slipping into a very short break. Do stay with us. Among the inseparable identity of Delhi, Qutub Minar has stood by the test of times and elements. Struck by lightning a few times, the 240-meter star suffered damages on its top story. Feroz Shah Tughlaq and Sikandar Lodi had commissioned the repair under the rule, but the damage most remembered was the one in the 19th century, when an earthquake had damaged the topmost story in 1803. The responsibility of the repair was given to a British officer, Major Robert Smith, who had placed a pillared cupola on the top of the minaret. After massive criticism, the then Governor General Harding ordered the cupola to be removed. It was reinstalled at the ground level to the east of Qutub Minar. It still remains there, known as Smith's Folly. now. Rajya Sabha Television's YouTube channel has 4 million subscribers now. 1 million people have subscribed to our channel in less than 6 months. 6,000 people joined our YouTube channel daily. RSTV's YouTube channel has 1 million video views every day. 
In 2019 alone, Rajya Sabha Television's YouTube channel had 400 million video views. Become a part of RS TV. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like and share our videos. Rajya Sabha Television, marching ahead. What are some key legislations introduced in Rajya Sabha? Some of the key legislations introduced in Rajya Sabha are the Hindu Marriage and Divorce Bill 1952, the Hindu Succession Bill 1954, the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Bill 1969. Prolific British poet and story writer Joseph Rudyard Kipling, one of the first masters of short stories in English. In 1894 appeared his Jungle Book, which became a children's classic all over the world. Kim, the story of Kimball O'Hara and his adventures in the Himalayas, is perhaps his most felicitous work published. Set in and concerned with India, he had come to know and love so well. In 1907, Kipling became the first English language writer to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. Welcome back to this special broadcast on Rajya Sabha TV, where we are trying to understand the tensions between Iran and the United States, how it's getting worse by the day in the morning uh, today. Iran launched missile attacks on U.S. Uh, forces, in fact, the U.S. soldiers housed in bases in Iraq, and following which now Donald Trump is expected to deliver an address on the conflict with Iran. Akhleer Suman, our foreign affairs editor, joins us on the phone line to understand the situation better as to how, in fact, what is at stake for the world, especially for India, as, per, as far as this conflict between the U.S. and Iran is concerned. So, Akhilesh, uh, before the break, you helped us understand what led to this situation. So, in the context of whatever is happening over the last few days between U.S. and Iran, the manner in which the tensions are only escalating further, help us understand what has been Trump's Iran policy. I know Iran has always been uh, telling that uh, we don't want to escalate the situation. Hmm. And uh, as far as the uh, U.S. is concerned, U.S. Uh, has almost 60,000 troops in the whole region. If you count every any country in the Gulf region, everywhere hmm. Americans are present uh, in big way. Their naval ships are present in big way. But Iran is also trying to keep uh, its head high by saying that if it is ag attacked again, uh, in that situation, it will retaliate both inside USA and also outside USA. Like mm -hmm. they are telling that Dubai, they may attack. They are also telling that Haifa, that is one of the major, you know, uh, uh, cities of uh, Israel, they may also attack Haifa. And they have told that if any base from any country in the region is used to attack over Iran, Iran will attack on those bases also. Mm. So I think it is going to uh, uh, create a situation that every country in this region will be involved in the war, given the fact that U.S. is an outside force for this region. Uh, mm. It will uh, come from outside, though its naval ships are there, but the whole region will be dis uh, disturbed. And this is the biggest worry of everyone, including India and even European Union, that if this whole region is disturbed again, we have seen the consequences of Gulf War earlier. And if it is going to be, it will be much, much more fierce than what we have seen in the time of, you know, uh, Saddam Hussein or uh, uh, mm. uh, 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 other country, Libya. And the country. Iranian president repeatedly says that, that, you know, America's feet is going to be cut off from this region and Iran is going to ensure that. Yeah, actually, Iranians were fighting in both ways. You know that while Iranians were one way fighting the U.S., the Iranians were also fighting the, you know, Taliban and Al-Qaeda element, ISIS element. So mm -hmm. in that situation, you cannot just blame Iran that it was just fighting U.S. Because of Iran, you know, Taliban and Al-Qaeda were also in control in this whole region. But, uh, you know, that uh, U.S. was not ready to accept the Iranian hegemony in this whole region. 
and what we had got uh, from uh, uh, many diplomatic sources that Mr. Soleimani, uh, when he was assassinated by Americans, he was going to Saudi Arabia for some negotiations. And uh, in that way, uh, in, in between, he was assassinated. So mm. in that situation, you, you can understand that it is not, not just the question of Iran, Iraq tension, uh, Iran and, uh, you know, U.S. tension, but it is also the question of who will be the hegemon in this whole region. U.S. was earlier the hegemon in this whole region, but Iran is trying to come up in a big way. Even Turkey has been trying to come up in a big way. So it is a you know a fight among different forces in the region, and it is also uh, the fact that U.S. doesn't want anyone to become any big power in this whole region. So I think uh, the, the situation is quite complicated. And it is a real balance of power situation. Everyone is fighting to, trying to get his, uh, their own pound of flesh. And that is why, uh, you know, you can see that Gulf region has been quite divided. Either mm. they, are, they are divided by ideological or religious systems, or they are divided by big powers. And NATO has always been present in the you know whole Gulf region, so it is a, uh, not a very easy situation from any country outside this whole region to go and intervene directly. But given the fact that Americans have presence in all the countries of the region, they have uh, always the upper hand. But if this upper hand will work in this time when Iranians have you know made themselves very uh, strong and they had been claiming that there are people. Uh, are their people are present in every country and even inside USA. So whether this threat will work uh, to persuade and to uh, keep uh, US in, uh, in, in a situation that they don't escalate, it will be interesting to see. And uh, we are waiting that whether Mr. Donald Trump is coming with his own assessment and his uh, you know system as, uh, uh, assessment that what has been the real loss in uh, 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 missile bombing inside Iraq. And if um, uh, the assessment is that it was very, uh, very deep, uh, you know, uh, casualty, uh, as Iranians are claiming that 80 American soldiers have been killed. And if really 80 American soldiers have been killed, I think this will be a big thing for uh, America and Mr. Donald Trump will be under very big challenge from inside his own domestic uh, constituency. And the yes, way indeed. Iranians are telling that they are trying to address uh, their domestic uh, constituency after the assassination of uh, General Soleimani, uh, Mr. Trump will be also under challenge uh, from uh, his own domestic uh, constituency, the way he was uh, trying to keep his head uh, strong, he was trying to keep his head high, that we have sophisticated machines. It will be interesting to say that whether he will be in a position to escalate and whether he can go in certain uh, type of creating a midway so that a small challenge can be <clears throat> given to Iran, and then uh, he can uh, try to de-escalate. So it is really interesting and very complicated situation in this point of time, Tina. Yes, indeed, Akhilesh. So as we await uh, President Donald Trump's statement coming in any time now, Akhilesh, uh, you know, looking at what Iran has done this morning, the action that it took on the U.S. troops in Iraq, do you think, and also after that, the kind of strong statements coming both from Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei and also from Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, do you think there is more to come from Iran? Uh, Iran has already been threatening since very early in the morning that uh, if uh, Donald Trump takes action now, uh, they will uh, be replied. And uh, they told that uh, we are not going to do guerrilla warfare, but mm -hmm. our people are there everywhere. And those people may um, uh, retaliate on American interest anywhere in the world. And what I was trying to understand from uh, <clears throat> many diplomatic sources who had worked in uh, this Gulf region, they are telling that uh, Iranians might uh, target the American interest inside the Gulf region because Iranian Americans have spread themselves in the whole region. And uh, uh, it may be a shock and all situation from America if Iranians target any, you know, a stray uh, naval ship of uh, Americans. So I think uh, Iranians uh, also cannot be just uh, told that uh, they, he, uh, they are in the situation of Saddam Hussein. The difference mm. between Saddam Hussein and now uh, Khamenei regime of Iran is also that, you know, Saddam Hussein was a leader of minority and he was ruling the country of Iraq. Uh, Saddam Hussein himself being a Sunni leader, he was uh, ruling the country of the Shias and Kurds. 
So there was internal sabotage also against Saddam Hussein. There was internal rebellion also against Saddam Hussein in the, during the Iraq war. But Iran is a different situation. Iran is a totally homogeneous, uh, the Sunni regime. And the uh, you know, uh, neighboring Iraq is also Sunni regime now. Syria is Sunni regime now. You know, the, the, the uh, Houthis are there acting in the whole region. So I think this time situation is quite challenging for Americans than it was earlier in Saddam Hussein time, or you, you can also understand the Gaddafi's time. So this time, uh, what Americans are going to do, they will be very cautious that uh, are, this is a new situation. This is a new situation also because how far Iranians have gone in getting the nuclear capability is also a big question. Uh, nobody knows that uh, uh, how far Iranians have uh, created a capability so that uh, even they can use the dirty bombs sometimes. So whether, uh, like, you know, in uh, Iraq, uh, Saddam Hussein time, some chemical weapons were used. So this time, uh, given the fact that Iranians uh, are using, you know, uranium uh, reactor, though they are telling that it is for peaceful purposes, but whether they do have a certain capability in the nuclear arsenal, in, in shape of dirty bomb and any other, whether they have improvised the whole situation, it will be very, you know, challenging situation. And it will be uh, not be very easy for American intelligence to get the whole situation. So I think Americans will uh, uh, make a very calculated dis uh, decision. And mm. when America makes a decision, they also announce generally. So let Definitely, us Definitely, Akhilesh. So as we await, the, uh, await President Trump to come any time on the podium and deliver his address, we can see on, on our screens that uh, you know the top officials, U.S. Secretary of State, uh, Mike Pompeo, also the Defense Secretary, they're already there waiting for the Prime Minister. In fact, the president, I beg your pardon, President hmm. Trump can come anytime and deliver his address. The first presidential response after the Iran missile attack this morning.